these on a fucking... Why the fuck did they give me these? I said salted, you motherfucker. You got this on camera? Three <laughs> motherfucking raisins. Take these fucking back to Best West and, and stick it up their ass. Fucking pricks. You hungry? Well, I'm hungry. You like baseball? Well, I love that shit. Want a slice of pizza? Go to New York. You want hot weather? Come to LA. You want to break bread? Call Nick DeToro. Ready, motherfucker? Are you ready? Well, I'm fucking ready. Get ready. Yeah, we're rolling. We always got a fucking rage already. They gave me three raisin bagels. When I ordered three salted. It was bad enough the other night McDonald's gave me a fucking a fish fillet that was like hard as a brick. It was more like a brick fillet. That's what it was, a brick fillet. And they brought me one even harder. I said, this is even harder. They go, you want your money back? I go, can I have something else? They go, no, you could have your money back. I said, all right, give me my fucking money then. Chick-fil-A, not Chick-fil-A. Why am I saying Chick-fil-A? Fuck it, because I got Chick-fil-A on my mind. Because the salted bagel. Fish fillet. Fish fillet. Right, because the salted bagel threw me off, Jim. That's the whole fucking thing. Yeah. You, you might a sell bit, right? a salted bagel. Right. And they fucking throw in a couple of raisin. A couple of raisin. I like raisin toast, but I don't like raisin bagels. Look at these fucking things. They look like they were fucking like somebody gouged them or some shit. Look at the look of these things. Right, Tell me this looks way. good. Right. I don't even like the look of this shit. They're going back. <laughs> Back to the Western bagel. bagel. You got bagel for Jim? You want one of these, Jim? No, well, take, a, no, take a raisin no, if bagel. No, if you're hungry, I'll give it to you. Take it. If you want to eat the raisin bagel, I'm talking about Did so you want I one? It. Yeah, I'm pissed. Soft. Take them back and get pissed at them. Yeah, but I'm already, I, I already... I already did it. You already got what, it on the... a couple of gavones over here? They fucking yeah. bring us the raisin <laughs> bagels. We're rolling anyway. We got this. Get a plate to put the lot... Oh, and just leave it on that thing. Yeah. Yeah. Do you eat saved the bag. What? Do you eat with locks? I eat locks. What yeah, do you, you think put I put locks, you get an onion, a tomato, and, and some capers on that. I know. Oh, oh, oh my God. Bro, it just is off the... Oh, my God. What a fucking day. Five seconds. It's all right. That ain't got that fine. Five... This one's still now. Let no. me get That's fine. My hand, five second rule, bro. Slap that on that fucking... That's a five second rule. Come on, bro. That's five second. I heard that uh, Netflix just has a state of policy that you can't stand, stare at another female employee for more than five seconds. It's nice to see that women have finally made it to the same level as a piece of food you drop on the ground. That? Netflix? Yeah, they get, you can't stare at another employee for more than five seconds. Five seconds. It's like a five second rule. I said it's nice to know that, that women have finally reached the same rights as a piece of food you dropped on the ground. It's the old five second rule. Hey, five second rule. No napkins, huh, Nick? I'm gonna wipe, well, I'll wipe them on my new fucking. All right. All right. Are you ready, old man? Yeah, let's... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm fucking ready. Hey, is anything okay today? Yeah. Nothing's okay. No fucking... Everything all right? Nothing's all right. Or is that from a movie? The fuck is that? Uh, so there's this uh, six old Jewish lady sitting at a table, and the waiter comes up after after he's dealt with him for about a half hour. He goes, he comes up to the table and goes, hey, is anything all right? <laughs> now, she so usually goes, everything all right? There you go, got some napkins, got some paper towels. Right. Let's hey, see. is anything all right? Everything all right? You know how many animals died so you can wear that? What's that line from a movie? You know how many animals died so you can wear that fur coat? She goes, you know how many animals I had to fuck to get this fur coat? <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Schubert in the house. Hey, my ride's here. I got to go. Listen, <laughs> nah, hey. Good night. What the fuck? Got a couple paper towels. Look at this. I got a fucking, like a second, uh, it's all right, we'll try this out. I don't know about this setup, but we'll try it. Give it a shot. Give it a fucking Ready? shot. We'll give it a shot, see well, how it works. I got set off on the wrong foot today already. With the, oh, they gave me the wrong bagels and everything. Cocksuckers. He eat too much pizza, bro. <laughs> Paul, Paul eat too much pizza. Pizza review? Yeah. Yeah. Put place. Yeah, well, you can't put, get Portnoy to step up. He, he follows you, too. He follows me. Why, why doesn't he fucking respond once? Fucking Portnoy. There rolling? is no 1412. I gave Jimmy the wrong address. Yeah, we saw him huh. on the wrong street. So that was funny. I saw him down the street. Jimmy! <laughs> I, said the, I sent the poor guy to the wrong... I sent him to... What, 12th Street? This no, is you sent me to 14th Street, but 14th it was 12th Street. Because yeah. that was my next guess. I was going to come to 1214 12th Street. 
I saw a guy with, an eye, with a hat. I go, that looks like Jimmy. By order the Peaky Blinders, eh? <laughs> By order the Peaky Blinders, eh? Look at you. You're all fucking tits and cuff. Bring it over here, Natalie. What? You guys are ready? All right, here we go. And action. All right. Jimmy Schubert in the house. Hey. 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 How you doing? Great to have you, buddy. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. I'm uh, looking forward to it. This guy is a funny, funny comedian, funny guy. I don't know him that long. I saw him at the, uh, where did I see him? Laugh Factory. I saw him at, at the Laugh Factory, but, I, but I saw him, I met him. I at met that, him at the, the, the Sportsman's Lodge. Yeah, at the Sportsman's Lodge for that. that <laughs> they were doing a benefit for uh, Crohn's disease. Yeah. And our friend Gary Valentine was there and Rock Rubin and Mike Burton and a bunch of that, that whole crew. Yeah. And we went up and all did some stand-up and that's, yeah, that's where I first met you. And then I saw you in Vegas at Russell Peters show up there, which was awesome. A great night. And then again the other night. So, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it's great to have you, man. You're like one of the best, I think, you know. One of the hardest working comedians out there. Very, very funny, man. You got to see this guy live. He gets, he gets all revved up. I was watching him go backstage in Vegas. He was like pacing. He was like really. You know. I, well, you know, it's like being a bo you know boxer. You come out, you want to. I you know, look. I love making people laugh, man. That's like my right. favorite thing to do. So I get to get excited for it. And I'm passionate about it. And a lot of people think you. Know, they mistake my like. I'm just, I'm just excited to make people laugh. I want to do it. People think I'm angry. I go, I'm not angry. I'm the fuck. I'm a. I would describe myself as belligerently optimistic. <laughs> I'm not fucking angry, but you know, but I have a lot of passion. You know, I love, I love what I do. And so, yeah, I get revved up. I get worked up. And 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 that's just the way. That's just you know my process for doing it. But I, you know, that those, you know, I was just our friend Russell took me to India. Which was an amazing experience. I'd never been to India, and I'm going, you know, so it's literally 24 hours of straight flying. Right. You're flying all the way over. You land in Pune, India. You know what I mean? I, I get off the plane, and five hours later, I'm for the 6,000 people in Pune, India, and I'm. I was What's doing, the name of it? It was Pune, Pune, India. Pune. Yeah, it's in the south of India, but. Uh, and you, you're you're opening for Russell Peters. Yeah. So know. there's 6,000 people there. It's this huge event. And I just, like, I never been, I go, he goes, it's like America. They got the internet, they know shows, talk about your thing. So I go, well, I, I, <laughs> I did my hamburger press bit. And Russell goes, yeah, they don't eat hamburger here, Schubert. They don't what is that? What is that? Well, the hamburger, look, when you go, like I said, I was saw this thing, was a hamburger press. It said, it makes the perfect hamburger patty every time. I went, really? Every time, you fucking OCD nutbag, it's a hamburger patty. You roll it <laughs> on a ball, you mush it. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. We were clubbing things with rocks and cooking it over an open fire. I don't need a thing to teach me how to make it perfect. It's got to be perfect. It's got to go to my perfect party, my perfect house, and my perfect house. Hey, 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 take a Zola off. It's a cheeseburger. Someone's going to eat it and turn it into shit. It doesn't have to be perfect. And they just, <laughs> like it, they, on the package, they said it saves time. I go, no, it doesn't save time. You had six steps in the process. I got to buy it. I got to clean it. I got to store it. I got to remember I have it next time I'm making hamburgers. Then I got to clean it and put it away again. Or I could just do this. So what's this thing called? It's called the hamburger press. So what? You put the the, the the chopped meat in there? No, it's a circ It's a red circular thing. You put the meat in there. You smush it down with this little thing, and it makes a perfect hamburger patty. It's Have supposed you used... to make the process faster. Yeah. Oh really? But it's no. I, I, rather than rolling with your hands and doing this, I mean that's part of the fun of making a hamburger. You get right. to roll it. You get to mush it. You have a flashback at a time you were eight with the play-doh. You know what I mean? It's like right. it's like yeah, it's <laughs> part of the fun of making a fucking hamburger. So now they got a fucking device. That, yeah, because because like at the at, the, at one point, I go, I mean, how easy are they going to make things for us? I mean, as it is, I mean, we're human beings. We need a sense of purpose. I mean, if you go back, you know, I mean, we, we used to hunt our own food and cook our own food. Now right. you go to the supermarket. Now they want you to, you know, check yourself out, which is another thing. I don't fucking work here. You know, check your side. I don't work here. Right. I can, if I would, I accidentally filled a job application while I was in the produce section. Right. You know, I got to all of a sudden, I don't know the code for a fucking cantaloupe. It takes me 25 minutes. I like the old way. You interact yeah. with the board cashier. You make a joke. You put a smile on her face. She right. smiles. And then she asks you if you have any coupons, which I don't because I'm not a housewife from 1987. <laughs> Who's got time to clip coupons all day? Maybe you should pick up a part-time job and... Save yourself to 17 You like cents. the supermarket? I do. Do you, do you like going well, to the I'm supermarket? A, I'm a single guy. I got to shop for right. myself. I mean, otherwise, you know, you can only eat so many, so much. Ta I, like, I'm trying to eat better, and so I do my own shopping, you know? But do you enjoy it? Do you, I mean, when you go there, like, do you go there with a plan, or do you, like... No, I, you, I, I go... Then with, you always wind up getting more... Yes, than, you always wind up getting more. Except yeah. now, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate on getting less, because I don't... I'm trying to go the other direction, just buy for, like, two or three days. 
Right. And then so you know that you don't want to, because I, I hate to waste food. I, I absolutely hate it. But you go to a fucking, you know, that's why everybody's getting sick now. You go to the, the, the yogurt section, it's just like a fucking, it's like a museum of yogurt. I'm going, how yeah. many flavors of yogurt do people yogurt. need? Right. I mean, it's, it's like, it's like, it's, uh, you know, you got butter and margarine are in the corner going, we used to run the dairy section. Now you got all these foreigners moving in with their bacteria. I mean, there's Greek yogurt, there's Yo Play, there's, da like, you know, what's so great about Greek yogurt? What's in there? What is it? Ouzo and milk and a didactic lecture on the perils of an unintellectualized democracy? <laughs> <laughs> Finally, a yogurt with Aristotelian ideas. You know, it's just... I just but, thought yogurt was yogurt, right? Yes. When, when we were kids, what was that, Dan and yogurt? Yeah, there, there was... There was, there when, was I, when we were kids, you go to the supermarket, there was eggs, juice, milk, cheese, cottage cheese. Remember cottage cheese? Yeah, I remember it was cottage, made in cottage cheese. Cottage, it was made in cottages. It was you healthy. know what I used to eat? Sour cream. Sour cream, yeah. Sour cream and bananas. Ew. But cottage... No, no, not fucking ill. You don't know what you're talking about. Sour cream and bananas with a little sugar. Did your stomach get destroyed? I don't remember. I have had a bad stomach my whole life, but I don't remember. If probably, that that's probably why you ate the sour cream and bananas. Well, you're not going to get any adjective from that. I don't think so. <laughs> but the cottage cheese, I mean, you, you know, uh, you know, suburbanite women used to eat that while they're walking that fine line between anorexia and divorce. Yeah. They used to eat that cottage cheese. <laughs> they used to eat that cottage cheese. I don't know, but I, I don't like cottage cheese. I don't, I don't know my taste buds, you yeah, know. Yeah, I, I don't... I, 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 I see. Even regatta, like you know, used to buy regatta. Oh yeah, regatta cheese, yeah. Regatta cheese, but you know, people don't even use that shit now. Why not? Well, I mean, they do, but not like you know, years ago. Hey, you put a little honey in it with some uh, rosemary, and you put honey. Little, yeah, you put a little honey in the regatta cheese. <laughs> regatta cheese with the with rosemary. And really? And, yeah. Oh yeah. Um, do you cook, Jimmy? Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a monster. I love to cook, man. That's because I travel so much when I'm home. I like to cook. I uh, just bought a cookbook, but uh, I can't use it because uh, every recipe starts with take a clean pan. And uh, <laughs> I'm a little bit of a slob. I'm kidding. No, I did, but I, I do love to cook because when I travel, I'm not in control of what I can eat. I got to right. eat what's available. And so when I'm home, I try to control yeah. my, 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 my food. And it's interesting because what you put into your mouth is responsible for about 80% how you feel about yourself. I mean, you know, food's kind of medicine if you if you prepare it right and cook it right. And, right. and we've taken that whole industry and we've turned it over to strangers. And you don't know what the fuck to bring in the table if it's organic, if it's got chemicals in it or what, you know, they get to, you know, so. You believe in that shit? I ain't believe in eating yeah. clean. I yeah. mean, you know, you, you don't realize how many, like, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you just talk about like baseball players go. They t he tested positive for growth hormone and uh, pesticide. What happened? I just had a, a bucket of McNuggets at McDonald's. Just gonna, <laughs> I, just, I don't I maybe give me dirty urine for the baseball. I get you got growth hormones. I, I just had some chicken, you know, because right. they put up, they put all that stuff in it. You see all these food documentaries, and it's all like fucking. They put sugar in everything. It's like fucking poison. Like back in the '60s, maybe a person had four or five tablespoons of sugar through a day. Now. Like some people are, it's like 85 tablespoons of sugar. No wonder we got a diabetes epidemic in this fucking country. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just, it, they put sugar in everything. They put sugar in ketchup. It doesn't have to be in fucking ketchup. But right. you know, you get, you get all hopped up on that stuff and it's, it's fucking poison, really. I know, you don't really realize, you know, all this shit that you put in your body. You just don't, you know, now when you get older, you start thinking about it. It's like, wow, I, I never even thought about it years ago. I just fucking ate to eat. Yeah, know? I just ate to eat. We didn't know. We didn't have, we didn't have the, uh, but it's like, you know, you watch all these UFC guys. I thought, you know, I, I remember back when I did a King Queens episode, um, Randy Couture was on the episode. And he was sitting there and he was just eating raw spinach out of a bag, like potato chips. I was like, that's how these guys eat. They eat so clean. You know, because you want your body to, you know, perform at a, an optimal level. But you know, I got a, I got a, I got a sweet tooth for ice cream. I can't help it. I, you know, I got to get the Talentis late at night. You go in. <laughs> I know it's that late at night shit, right? Yeah, right. You know, and, you shouldn't eat after a certain hour. But you know, do you get those munchies like late at night? Oh yeah, I, I you know, I just, I usually, I try to just drink a glass of water and, and go to bed, and that, then that, you know, and, and kind of take care of it. But you know, you gotta. You know, you're getting older. You got to watch your metabolism. I, I'm, I'm just—it's just something I'm, I've become aware of. You know, I'm just trying to believe me. When I was younger, I didn't. I used to tour with Sam Kinison. You know, I mean, we were in Vegas for four days, no sleep. You know, do, a, do Sam Kinison. Oh yeah, back in the day, I was a kid and I wow. toured with him and opened for him. And you know, he goes to Vegas for like, you know, we we're doing the dunes for three weeks. So, I mean, I, le I left Vegas. I had to get a catch again. I thought I had brain damage. <laughs> you know, there was so much. There's so many. I mean, so many. <laughs> there was like strippers and blow and booze and all these rock stars. Are How many out. guys have you opened for? Like, I mean, well, no, over the years. Yeah. Uh, 
So Sam Kinison Sam is Sam Kinison was, yeah, it was early in my career, and I've right. opened for Russell recently. But uh, Russell Peters. Yeah, I've worked with, with Billy Gardell. You, you know, you go to yeah, comedy clubs, you work Gardell. with a lot, lot of these guys. You work with a lot of these guys over the years, and you become friends. I mean, that's the great Billy thing. Billy was in my pilot years ago. Oh, yeah. Then I tried to put him in another pilot. Now the guy's got... Had a hit show of his own. Yeah. Had now a he's show. on another show. I mean, yeah. It's <laughs> Billy. Am, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. I liked him. And I met him years ago and he was a good actor. And Billy's I thought, great. Billy's great. He was my neighbor for a while. He was, was he your neighbor? Yeah, he used to live upstairs for me. Yeah, Pittsburgh Lord. guy, right? Yeah, Pittsburgh <laughs> yeah. guy. I, mean, I got, you know, was really, I we did were, the whole crowd. Honeymoon was thing. He would yeah. yell at me. I would go out. <laughs> I went up his house. He got a brand new television. And it was a giant TV. And I, he goes, what do you think of the new TV? I said, I, th I think it's a little big for your apartment. He goes, get out of my house. <laughs> get, get out of my house. He goes, that's the only piece of furniture my wife would let me buy, Shuba. Get out. You oh know what it was? He's, he's great, man. He's a, he's a great guy. I'm happy for him. I am too, man. He deserves yeah. all the success in the world. You know, you know, guys, how hard you work at this. Dude, there was a period of time, like six months, where me and Billy Gardell were going up for like the same kind of roles. And like I would, I would be going. He would be coming. He would be coming out. I'd be going. And, and this went on for like. And he, I got. And if he didn't get the job, I got the job. It was like like that. For like, acting jobs. Yeah, acting jobs. Yeah. And it was, it was then, so both you guys started out as stand ups, right? Yeah, started out stand ups, but and I, then have segued into acting. Yes, but uh, you know, I took it seriously. I went to a magnet school in, in Philly. I went to the Philadelphia High School for Creative and Performing Arts. I, I majored in acting there. You did three acting classes a day. I came out here. I studied with. Uh, you know, Karen West, uh, Daryl Hickman, and I, you know, I took it seriously. I didn't just think, oh, hey, I'm just going to go act now. But, I, right. you know, it's a craft, like stand-up is a craft, and it, it's its own discipline. And you need to know that you got to have some tools in your toolbox. So, yeah. How old were you when you started at stand-up? I was started in Philly in, like, like 17 years old. I was 17 a, I was years a magician, old? believe it or not. I started out doing magic. I was, like, about nine years old. I started doing, like, magic. By the time I was, like, 12 and 13 and 14, I was doing, like, you know, I was doing, like, six gigs a week. I had doves. I had the whole thing. <laughs> Thing. I was like, how long did you do the magic for? I did it for uh, did it till I was about seventeen, and then I just kind of hung up the wand and I started going to stand, who, started who? doing the uh, comedy clubs, and uh, and I and I. I just, We're in Philly. Yeah, in Philly. Is it that is, where you're from? Yeah, Philly's where I'm from. Yeah, so you're so, a Philly guy. Yeah, so we started in Philly. Believe me, those Philly sports fans are the same people sitting in comedy clubs. I mean, if you did, if you suck, they let you know. And I have a couple tapes when I first started. Oh, you know, like the <laughs> horrible. You know, you had to be funny in Philly. You knew. Right. So I started there. And then uh, about 19 years old, I, you know, worked the whole summer. I was doing construction. I was working at the bar at night. I saved all my money, about 15 grand. I drove across the country uh, to start at as a, a doorman at the comedy store. I wanted to get in out there. And I was going to go to New York. But I said, if I go to New York, I'm going to have to go to L.A. Anyway, so why don't I just go to L.A.? And start over, and man. So, your doorman, you're basically just like what? You're just like taking the tickets and letting people Taking the in. tickets and seating people, but the great thing about but it. But then they would let you perform? Yeah, you could go up in the belly room. There's three rooms in the comedy store, and, 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 and so you could. But the great thing was, you got to watch the greatest comedians in the world. You got to watch Sam Kinison and Andrew Dice Clay and, and, and uh, Robin Williams and Carlin and, and Pryor and Gary Shandling. And, uh, These I mean, were the guys you were watching. Yeah. You, you when know, you the, were like what? In your, tw in your 19, 20, yeah. And yeah, working the door yeah. and it was like my it was like my college for me it was sure. college and you got to watch and you could watch and you could learn as much watching a bad comedian as you could watch a good comedian and we me and this other guy noodles levenstein and we used to work the main room we had to wear tuxedos but they would flip that room three times hey you, you just uh, the, so the, and you just watch it and study it like a science and then you could get your own spots and we were doing like i remember on a monday night i had a day job working at a law firm and as soon as i quit my day job we drive to the natural fudge in west hollywood then we go across to Monty Steakhouse in Westwood, which was on, on the top floor. Then we go over to Alley Cat Bistro in Culver City. We'd shoot up late night for the Silver Screen Jazz Room, which was in the hotel next to the comedy store. They did a comedy night. And then you'd go to the comedy store for a Monday night, late night spot. And that was like trying to get as many spots because stage time's the name of the game. The more you get up, the funnier you're going to get. And, and you just keep writing and working. And, and it was just, I was just obsessed by, with it. I didn't do obsessed anything. Obsessed with it. Yeah, I just would, yeah. would work and do stand up and work. And, and then I'd fall asleep and dream about doing stand-up. Then I go up, go to my day job, pay my bills, and then get back out there on a thing. And I wound up touring with uh, Sam Kinison saw me and took me, like, we went like 70 cities, 30 cities. We, we toured, we did Vegas. 
But I mean, you know, I watched that guy blew up. I mean, he, he would go to Vegas. As, you know, it's Billy Idol's hanging out, Ted Dugent. I mean, all these rock stars and all these porn stars, <laughs> all these strippers <laughs> and all these comedians. And it was back, you know, back in the you know late '80s. Everybody was doing a little bit of the booger sugar and a little bit of Olivia March and Power. <laughs> thank, God, you, thank God, those days are over. You know what I mean? I retired to straw. It was a Hall of Fame career, but uh, hung up the bat. And uh, now I did it back when you could use plastic straws. Now, really? You know, cause, <laughs> well, now you can't because the turtle got one stuck in his nose. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, fuck that turtle. You know what I say? <laughs> I, tur I had a plastic straw stuck in my nose for about seven years. No one gave a shit about me. That turtle needs to hit bottom and get himself to a meeting. He'll be fine. <laughs> 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 no, but it was, uh, but yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a crazy time, man. I, like, and, and then I kind of, Sam died in 92, and, and I went on the road and tried to, like, you know, get, get back to that level and, and wound up, uh, I went to Florida for a couple of years and started working down there and, uh, who was the comedians you would say maybe influenced you a little bit? Was oh, coming easily. Up? Well, Dice with Dice well, in his Yeah, oh, absolutely. Dice. You saw him in his heyday, right? Oh yeah, I was good friends with Andrew yeah. back in the day, dude. You want to hear the funniest story, dude? Dice, because he does that. I you love know, Dice. I, I love him tell too. Me, tell dude, me the Dice story. Dude, this is the greatest thing ever. You're gonna love this. So I was doing. I had memorized. Remember Rambo, First Blood. Yeah. And then you First Blood. That right, mean. Right. That mean. It was a bar with Sagan. Right. And the guy comes through the box and says, "Shine, shine," and his fucking legs are off. And he says, "Johnny, Johnny, take me home." I said, "I would, but I can't find your fucking leg." You know, that whole little box. <laughs> yeah. So I right, went, they blew so First Blood. Yeah. I did that for Dice. You did that for Dice. I do that. I just, I'm just fucking around outside the comedy. Right. I did that. He's fucking dying. He's with Gallagher. He's fucking dying. He goes, the people inside need to see this. So he grabs me, he goes, get ready to do that. We go inside, I do it on stage. And he's dragging me around, making me do it for people. He's just bringing you up on the stage? No, no, he brings me up on stage, we do it. Then we do uh, We go outside, I do it for a bunch of people, and a cop car pulls up and puts the spotlight on me, and I'm doing it outside the comedy store now. And it's like, it, and he goes, I'll tell you what, we're gonna get you an agent. So the next day, I call in to work at the law firm, tell him I'm sick, and Dice is gonna take me to his old agent, uh, William Morris, and he's driving this fucking green Cadillac with the roof down. We're listening to Frank Sinatra, and I said, I'm gonna win. We're driving to West Hollywood. With Dice? Yeah, with Dice. And he's and in like, what, a Coupe de Ville or something? Yeah, yeah, a Coupe de Ville. And he's, and he's sitting there, so he goes into the agent's office. He goes, Jimmy, wait here. He goes into the agent's office, and, yada, yada, yada. and about 10 minutes later, he comes back, and he goes, Jimmy, come on in. And so-and-so, so-and-so, close the door. He goes, when you feel it. He just looks at you, right? And I when you in, feel it? Yeah, when you feel it. And I go into the monologue, and I'm fucking screaming and yelling, you know, I'm slobbing, this is your first blood. <laughs> but, dude, <I> <laughs> but how would it start? How would you start it? I said, uh, you know, what, what yeah. he said, no, they drew first blood, right, they not me. Right. I was, you know, and then he goes, you want me to give the body back, you know? And so he did the, and so the guy, I get done, and I was screaming and giving everything. And at the end of it, the, the guy's <laughs> jaws on the desk. He goes, I, I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. I, I'm not really a casting director like the guy was mortified. He didn't, he didn't know what like to no, make No, he didn't know it, what to do. To I, didn't, I didn't realize at the time, but Dyson was acting out a scene from Comic and the Con, this movie that he wrote. But he was playing that, like the con. And he picks up and says, that's what you tell me? I bring you this guy, and that's what you say? Jimmy, let's get out of here. And we just walked out. <laughs> now, all these secretaries are in the middle of the floor and they're staring at us like we were just yelling at the guy to pay his fucking gambling debt or something because right. he's dicing his leather jacket. They figure we're a couple of heavies coming in. They go, what the fuck's going on with this guy? Right. Right? <laughs> you know, so he can, I have to bite my lip from laughing so hard because I couldn't believe he did it. And then we jump in his fucking Cadillac and drive off just laughing our balls off. But I love that he actually went into his old agent's office and right. made me do that. And actually made you do it. Yeah, uh, it was fucking hilarious. But, you know, and I would bring him. He used to do uh, he used to do kamikaze comedy. Like, we'd go to the Man's Chinese Theater, and like five minutes before the preview started, I would stand up, ladies and gentlemen, not since the Beatles. And I'd introduce Dice, and he would stand up and do stand-up before the movie and kill, and then the movie would start. So before a movie... Yeah, before like he he did it at, at the uh, Larry Parker's Beverly Hills Diner. He did it at, at, at uh, uh, he did it. He would just stand up and do comedy anywhere. It was called Kamikaze Comedy. Kamikaze Comedy. Yeah, yeah, wow. was, uh, yeah. So, but um, you know what an actor he's turned out to be. I know. Huh? I mean, he, I mean, he's he, actually Dice is a really good actor. He's a great. He's actor. He's a really good actor, and I, I think he may have started as an actor. But, you know, Dice can act, you know? Oh, I no, mean, dude, he was on Crime Story. I mean, he was, he on, was Crime on Crime Story, Story yeah, which you, people that didn't see that is a great show, Michael Mann. Oh, yeah, and, and, um, and, and he did, he, he was And so he's good really at, good in this uh, Woody Allen movie. He, I thought he was one of the best things in it. I, he, I agree with you 100%. And, 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 and as uh, Lady Gaga's dad in, in And he's Stars. good in that. 
I mean, he's, yeah. he does a great job, man. And he, you, you know, know what it is? He's uh, he comes across very grounded. You know, yeah. a, a lot of a lot of. I'm not going to say all comedians, but not all of them transition into really good actors. Yeah, and he can act. Yeah, he yeah, actually has some real chops. He's good in Star Is Born too. Is yeah, we yeah, just said. I, I, you know, yeah, he's he's very good in Star Is Born. And now, I mean, uh, you know, what, and what I love—he was good on freaking Entourage. He was hilarious. Yeah, he was great on Entourage and the, the Dice Show on Showtime too. I liked him Dice in was that. Great too. That was hilarious. It only went like. Two seasons. Yeah, I don't, but, but I don't still, know. I mean, that guy has really, like, you, I mean, you look, like, at, at one point, he, his career was over. He said, uh, you know, they, right. he was, by, like, one of the first guys to get PC'd by the, you know. Well, because he, he, like, blew up, and then they, they, they you know. But they, it was the same act they he did was it. doing for 10 years, yeah, but just because he was he doing got that famous. hickory dickory dock shit, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And then they did a hatchet job on him, kind of, right? Yeah, but that was the. But I, I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, but they they did the same thing with Sam Kinison as well. That you know, they called but, him out for saying stuff. and goes, hey. But what did he, what did why did they go after him? Because he was like going after Sam. Well, it was like no, it was gay, it was like the, the, the gay. Mm -hmm. He I guess he had done some off color gay jokes. Oh, okay. And so. so oh yeah, I, he used to you know that was a different time. But I mean, you know, yeah, it was a different time. But then they different. attacked him, you know. Oh yeah, but then they attacked. But you see it now more prevalent than ever in comedy. I mean, you can get fired for. A tweet now. I mean, you spent 20 years of your life. So how does that affect your comedy now? Well, like, you spent I mean, 20 years of your life trying to get in show business, right? And now you got to try, try not to get thrown out of it, right? Oh, you could never work again right. with that. You I tweeted mean, something. You tweeted something. Your career is you know, over. Your career is over. <laughs> you did 140 characters. How dare you? Wow. While you were an Ambien, you know. But I mean, it's like you, do you know, let that I, now. Do you let that affect your comedy at all? No, I just, I'm just, I'm just smart enough to write around it. Right. But I also know people are looking to get pissed off about something. And so, and I used to do a great bit about conjoining twins, and one of them wanted to be a country western singer, and the other one wanted to date. I go, how do you handle that? You know, I on my comedy cent on my comedy central presents, I did this whole thing about dating these two conjoining twins. One was a, a, a smaller person, and she, you know, you just got there having sex with one. The other one starts taking off, goes, hey, I'm having sex with your sister, midget. What do you? All right, little bitch. You, know, you, know, you got to see the special, but but uh, but yeah. Was this but, on Comedy Central? Yeah, it was one Comedy Central. They shot around it, thank God. But but I don't think you could do a bit like that now. You get tarred and feathered and run out of town. Yeah. I mean, some guys can. They get away with it. They have that. that you know, like Anthony Jeselnik is a great guy who can like tow that line real close. I Dave mean, Chappelle. But it is, I mean, but, if you're Dave Chappelle, you know, he can oh, yeah. basically, you know, he's or, brilliant. You know, but he could talk about anything. Yeah, uh, get Bill away Burr is the same way. I mean, you, you, you know, they, they can talk about anything. You know, I mean, I, but, um, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, how do you, you know, do, do you think there is a, do you think there's a fine line, or do you think like, you know, as a comedian, you should be able to. You know, uh, talk well, about anything. I think any you should be able saying. to say anything you want if it's funny. If it's funny. If it's funny. See, the point is, though, but you're dealing with people who now um, are interpreting your words that said, that, well, you said this. No, I didn't. I just mentioned, uh, you know, I know a comedian, uh, uh, Jill, Jill Kimmel, was attacked on stage because she brought up cancer on stage and some drunk woman attacked her because her friend's kid... Uh, has cancer or something, I, but people overreact to stuff now. You walk, I mean, you walk around, you see people are triggered. Now they're just look. I mean, if you're if you're just sitting in an audience in a comedy club waiting to get offended by something, then maybe you shouldn't go. You should not go to a comedy club. Maybe comedy's not your thing. Maybe you enjoy watching bowling or something. Maybe that's more your thing because I'm telling you, it's like, you know, you come to a comedy club, you know that these are jokes. Guys are joking. I shouldn't have to say, I'm just kidding after everything I fucking say. It's implied. You're at a comedy club. Right. You know, you're at the Chuckle Hut. You know, you're at the box, you know, the box. Well, chair. people are very sensitive. People well, are very sensitive yeah, over you, things look, now, yeah, right? But you know what's weird is we got. Like I grew up in the seventies. I, I do. You couldn't. The seventies was 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 the was brilliant because yeah. they broke so many grounds. I was watching a thing on CNN the other night, and they, you know, they do decades, and then they brought up the seventies. The television, the groundbreaking, all the stuff, look movies, at all, all in the family. All in the family was. Incredible, I, and the shit that they talked about. And the Jeffersons was great too. And then too. the Jeffersons came out of that. Yeah, I mean, you, and they were discussing it in a way that was kind of healing, I thought. And and now you could never do that stuff today because everybody is so sensitive. And I think, I think, man, we need to get back to how things used to be. I mean, everybody's taking everything so seriously. Right. The social media. I mean, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And you're right. You know what? If it's funny, if you laugh at it. You know, then you should be able to say, hey, you know, be subjective about it and say, 
we're not trying to offend anybody. We're just saying this is what it is. Yeah, but you know, comedians, this is what the fuck but, but it is. Comedians have like an elevated status now because a lot of guys are talking about stuff and, and like Chappelle addressed it, and as did Bill Burr in their specials about the the the. The, the you can't, I mean, you know, what's next? Are they gonna ha they're gonna fucking hashtag fucking Me Too on Santa Claus because a girl sat on his lap and he asked her if she was naughty or nice. I, he asked my daughter if she was naughty. And Santa Claus got Me too at the mall. Santa Claus got, but I mean, how crazy are we gonna get? I mean, yeah. you know, we're, we're living in, in, in a, you're setting a dangerous precedent. I, I think the First Amendment, you should be able to say whatever you want. I mean, you because you can't, you know, some people can't, control their emotions about something so they want to limit your ability to say anything because you can't even talk about it and i actually think that's the, that's the exact opposite you should be able to talk about it and, and have a discourse about it because that's will promote healing but to say no you can't talk about that you can't you know it's like no i can yeah. do whatever i want you know what i mean and where were these people when you were you know you're out there you know for the years i humped the highway and going where, where were you then? you're not gonna help, oh you want to come to a writing meeting and help me write my act is that what you want to do right all of a sudden i mean you know just look i'm just you know i do a thing about a peanut, uh, peanut allergy like a the peanut i don't know what happened to the peanut you know, I go, remember five years ago, it wasn't even a party till Mr. Peanut showed up? What happened to that guy? They ran him out of town, they took his hat, ripped his monocle out, snapped his walking stick, ruined his life. He's downtown Los Angeles right now, second guy for drug money. He's a former shell of himself. They ru <laughs> they ruined his life. But I mean, you know, but I like- This oh, is Mr. Peanut. Mr. Peanut, yeah. yeah. He's, he get the, he could sponsor the turtle when they go to a meeting to clean up their life. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, it's so much. Like it's 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 a lot. I mean, you can't create art that way. No, you, you can't. certainly can't create you can't. art that if way. If you have to worry about being creative and then worrying about look, well, I I'm... write something. If I think it's funny, I'm doing it on stage. I, that's my barometer. I'm going up and having a great time. And if I think it's funny, it's going in the act. That's it. But you don't <laughs> seem to hold back. You seem to like let it. You know. Yeah, but I. But do... but you keep it. You keep it. Within the parameters. Within of, what you're talking I don't, about. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not bringing up a cancer. I'm not doing race jokes. I'm not doing, uh, you know, misogyny. I'm not doing anything like that. I'm not, doing, I'm not doing anything that anybody can get offended at. I'm trying to, I, and it's really made me a better writer because you got to write around these things a little bit. Just to guess, well, if I say it this way with this inflection, that's offensive. But if I just change it a little bit, nobody's going to get mad at it. So why not? And plus, to tell you the truth, man, I do a lot of these, like, corporate, I'm doing a corporate golf outing uh, on Monday down in Tampa. I do a lot. Then I'm going to Chicago and doing some dates up there at the uh, Zanies in Rosemont and then on downtown. So if you can work clean, great. And I, and I can work filthy if I want to. I could do it. I could do it both. Just depends what show I'm doing because I got like two hours of material. But I'd rather go make some of that corporate money as well. I right. Mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of money out there. They go good chunk of change for the for the night. So for you fly night. in. You know, it's all first class operation, and boom. And next thing, next week, you're back in the comedy club where they want to hear a couple of dick jokes, so you get to bust it out a little mm -hmm. bit. But yeah, I, I mean. I do a lot of a lot of those kind of little in between gigs as well. You know, opening for Russell and doing your own comedy clubs and doing a little bit of everything, theaters, casinos. I mean, it's when you open for Russell, how long are you up there? About twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah, it's like the set I did the other night at the, right. at, the at the Laugh Factory. About that long, but that's that gets them going. I mean, that was what what a great uh, experience that was just to go to another culture. You know, I had to I, I had to make a couple tweaks along the way because had they respond to you? They liked it a lot. I just had to get like I had to like. Once, because I got there, I didn't have any time to go. Could, will this work? Or will this work? And I was picking uh, his brother's brain a little bit, going, "He goes, yeah, yeah, you get better off asking Russell." So I didn't. I just went with the hamburger thing. I didn't know that. Thing. Did the whole hamburger thing, the hamburger <laughs> patty thing? Yeah, and they were, and they're looking at me like, well, "What's a hamburger?" You know, they didn't. They don't <laughs> eat meat. They don't eat red meat. Right. It's so funny because we were in India for like twelve days. So did did they, they laugh at that? No, they didn't laugh at it. But I kind of, <laughs> but I dropped it down a gear and switched gears and went into another bit. I did this chicken omelet bit, which I love, about, you know, what we were having breakfast. They were serving a protein scramble, and I read the ingredients. It basically was an egg omelet with chunks of chicken meat in it. It was a chicken omelet, which is wrong. I mean, you don't take the eggs out of a chicken and then cook the chicken and put in the eggs. I mean, it's too much chicken who's back there cooking. Some kind of chicken serial killer who's working a grill, the barnyard strangler. Who's ordering breakfast? Tony Soprano? Listen, I want the chicken dead. I want his family dead. I want his unborn baby's dead. I mean, that's not a right. breakfast. It's a, a, a vendetta. You know? the, ther <laughs> the therapy <laughs> cat bit's great, too. What's that? The therapy cat bit. Oh, the, yeah. that, that's very funny. Yeah, but so that that, that was that's yeah. a universal bit. That worked over there. That did real well. And then I had to switch into that. But a lot of stuff that, you know, I used to do a bit about going into a seafood restaurant, and they had a giant fish aquarium in the seafood restaurant. And I'm going, why the... 
Why the fuck would you put that in there? They got nothing to do all day except swim around and watch the waiters walk by with the different ways that they could be prepared. You know, you right. talk about inhumane. You could see the horror on their little fish faces. You know, just sit there watching. It goes another one <laughs> on a bed of rice with a side of asparagus. It's just a matter of time for they come and get us, Larry. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> I think guys walking past with a plane, but you know those little those bits do well over there. You know those yeah. the, those are the kind of like you know, that like set that wouldn't offend anybody. You know what I mean? Except for you know it's it's always funny, but you know animal. Where are the animal rights people on something like that? You yeah, know? absolutely. You know what about the you know? Peter. It's like it's a, yeah, they always get a, a mad when you wear. You know, a fur. you know, my father said something funny about fish that people that don't eat fish he thought were dumb. Yeah, he said, if you don't eat fish, like we had these cousins that never ate, he goes, they're dumb, Nicholas. They don't they're eat really fish. dumb because well, they don't eat fish. The Paganos don't eat fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, there's something to be said for that. But, you know, because it's brain food. It's brain food. It's fucking brain food. So I, if they didn't like seafood, you know, you're thinking, it was very funny. My father used to come up with shit that was very funny. But you know what's funny? It is brain food. The woman. There's also uh, this, this woman who's an anthropologist out of England said that uh, you know they that she came up with this whole theory about how the the apes that ate seafood developed we developed from them because the brain developed and they you know and they were like uh it's called the aquatic ape theory but it's a, one of these not a lot of people back up but it actually made sense that if you know these kind of hung out in the water and kind of all the hair came off their bodies and they would hang out and, and they would hold on to the hair and head so the baby didn't float away and she had all these like scenarios on how we became from you know the, the aquatic ape theories that they ate shellfish and and stuff and developed brain power and so there's something to be said for that. So if you don't eat fucking seafood, you're a dumb fuck. All right. <laughs> but if you take one way, one lesson, go get some shellfish, you fucking asshole. Well, think about <laughs> it. Like when you when when you're doing an acting job and say at lunch, you know, you have like a a fucking big burger, you have a steak, whatever. You kind of shut down. Yeah. You know. So every, like you know, if you have some light fish or you have something yeah. uh, on that side. You seem to be sharper. Yeah, you know why? Because your fucking whole body, every organ in your body is working overtime to break down that big hunk of fucking red meat. Right. All the organs are working. I did a juice cleanse uh, a while back, and it was like, it was like, you know, I did like, you know, I, was, I said, I'm going to do this for 14 days. And, you know, day three, you can hit a wall, you watch the food channel. Right. Like it's porn. <laughs> ah, cook that steak. Ugh. So I made, I made it 14 days, but I, like, I got down to like 218. But it was us. But it was all the most digestible food. If you juice your food, it's the most digestible in vitamins and nutrients. Your body does zero work. Your body's like so I was. So you were juicing. I was juicing, and I would sleep like four hours a night. I had so much energy. I was my fucking skin clear. What were you I, eating? Nothing. I, no, I was juicing. I, 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 there was a um, there's a documentary on called Fat tired and almost dead and this guy uh, does this juicing and he and it's called the mean green juice it's kale it's a cucumber it's a lemon it's like a thumb sized piece of ginger uh two granny smith apples and you just drink it and and uh and you would do that like you, you get up in the morning you could drink it all day and if you and if, and i would i would also drink like a liter and a half of water first thing in the morning and really? then i would juice all day long and whenever I got hungry, more juice or more water. Did that for 14 days. I had so much energy. I mean, I was like, I was like, I was going I was, to the bathroom a lot. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. I, it was like uh, a little bit. Do. Yeah, once you clear the pipes, though, it's uh, yeah. You know, it's. Well, I got to tell you, yeah, it's a little, you know, liquid in, liquid out. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. Right. Not far with a lot of confidence after a juice. No. Time. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, man, I I I I made it. I'm thinking about doing it again just because of the way I felt. It was like so. I felt so great, man. I was like, had a bounce in my step, and so... Ooh, it I, cleans you out, right? Yeah, it cleans you out. It also cleans out all the your, your amino stuff, All the cleans all the, the receptors in your brain, and you just, you know, that, that if if you could do it, I mean... It would yeah, be, but 14 days is a long time. I know, dude. I, I, I got, but I, I was seeing results, though. Like, I mean, I was seeing results. I, that's why I kept doing it, going, if I keep up with this for 14 days, yeah. you know, the one guy in the video did it for three months. He has this guy, he runs on this guy at the end of the video, and this guy's like 420, and he gets this guy hooked on the juice, and he goes to see this guy, and he flies in, and the guy starts swimming. And Next thing you know, the guy's down to 220, was giant, but he's juicing every day. Like, uh, unbelievable. 
the guy got that. It was it was great to watch. It was a real transformation. So we how just, long ago did you do that? It was about two years ago, two, two and a half years, years ago. ago. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, but it was great, man. And you if know. you're on the go, it's probably good for you, like more energy. Well, the problem is I travel, like so I can't. I have to be home for 14 days. I got to be near a hopper. Uh, I got to be near a toilet. You can't stray too far from the bathroom when you're juicing. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it, man. I felt great. I, I think I, I think I may do it again. You know, just to, as a just to clean everything out. You know. How much are you on the road? I mean, out of the year, uh, you know, about 26 to 32 weeks a year, about half the year. Uh, depending, you know, um, so, you know, I think two weeks on, two weeks off. That's what I try to do. I try to stay available for auditions, but there's, you know, there's not really a lot to stay in town for anymore. So. Yeah, that's kind of a dead auditions. I don't even know what that is anymore. Yeah, you, really? Yeah, it's I, it's a uh... well, you know, and even if you get the job, there's no money to be made because it's all streaming. Right. Hey, if there's a way for an actor not to make a living, AFTRA has a contract for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty so, sad. So like I'm supposed to go, 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 go you know, I don't know what happened. Dude. Uh, like, you know, 10 years ago I'm doing King of Queens, you're doing this, you're doing that. Right. I was doing a bunch of stuff. I'm like invested in in the pension fund and now it's like, yeah, they don't even they the okay, agent will come right out and tell you, yeah, they don't even want to see you anymore. Yeah. They don't even want to see And if they do see you, you know, like even if you have a name, like I have something number name, they I might just be a backup. They might how, already have an offer how, out. How, yeah, but how the fuck I mean, with your resume, how do they, how do they not fucking... It happens. I mean, I've been at auditions where 10 guys look at me and they go, how you doing? They go, you have to come in for this? And I go, yeah. I'm like you. I'm on the street, just like you. I go, I go, yeah, well, you got... Yeah, you know, and, I, and I'm not going to win in the room because I've done so much shit in my life that, you know, this isn't really a, you know, a great sample of what I could do. If you, if you thought I was the guy, why am I even here? Because you could look at my body of work and say... You know, I've gotten yeah. work from from work. I, yeah. I mean, once in a while in my career that I've gotten a few auditions that I actually, you know, a, a couple got it, of got it from the audition. Yeah, a couple yeah. of times. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, I you know, I did when I was a young guy, but I was young. NYPD Blue. I mean, that was a young guy, but I I auditioned just once, but I I waited for like two months or some shit. They. Yeah. But that was a different time. Yeah, it was a different time. That was a different time. I, I mean, I, I remember I testing remember. one year. I got a. That was insane, nerve-wracking. Yeah. I mean, yeah, dude, I did this. I, I've, done, I've done shot in pilots. I've tested for stuff. And you go into a room, and there's like 15, 20 people just standing around. It's a tiny room, and you got to go in and read. And it's, like, it's terrible. That's nerve-wracking. It is nerve-wracking. You I, know I, what I mean? And I mean, you you know, either you, you, you bomb or you're like, you know, or you're like, you know, it was, you felt really good about it, but it's like, it don't mean... You know, yeah, it's not what it was. Not what it once said. Everybody's self tape. It's like you know the year yeah. of self tape. Like uh, this self tape shit is like really ridiculous. You know, it's like oh, it's I, awful. I yeah, I it. mean every now and then you hear some guys that book it. I, I don't know. Maybe they just got a, a fucking. I sent in a self tape and I booked it and I'm like, wow. I yeah. guess you know I've had some great self tapes. Well, you send them in, you never hear anything. Yeah, I know. So. It's yeah, it's it's got it's gotten weird, especially with all this digital stuff. But I mean, I've seen my own industry change. Like in stand up, it's it's all about you know social media now and how many followers and Twitters and yeah. Reach, and, and I go, look, I get it, but at the same time, I mean, I I'm mean, I'm you know I'm way more known than I am on just social media. I don't really know how to do it, so I'm kind of like half yeah, but we didn't still not about we didn't, this because we didn't grow up with no, I didn't grow and, up. And, and then you, you feel like people are getting fired for tweets. You go, why, yeah. why would, well then well, I'm not going to tweet. I'm not going to I mean, get myself kicked out of show business because I thought something was funny and as, and people took it the wrong way. Yeah. I mean, don't say that. Oh, delete it. You know, don't do this, don't do that. It's like, you know, it's hard to gauge what you, you should do or you well, shouldn't because, do. No, no, because people will interpret your typing. They, there's no sarcasm yeah. font. And and then you got, like, there's people out there that have 40 Twitter accounts and they just stream looking right. for something to get mad at and then they attack you with all 40 Twitter accounts. I mean, like, you know, the thing is, if it's not really for us. It's no. for people so they can respond to us. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, well, you blow. And you I'm know what it is? It's a, it's a game. It's, it's the, a fucking game. It's a and, faucet and, of hate. Yeah. Uh, what you is know, it? Some guys. Some in his, form of hate. Yeah. 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 So the guy's in his basement, his mom's basement. He's he's eating Doritos and drinking Red Bull and playing PlayStation. And we can support playing PlayStation and beating off. He's going to jump online and say something shitty about you. Like, like you, what, who the fuck are you to judge my life? Right. You're sitting in your mom's basement beating off like Migs from Silence of the Lambs and eating Doritos <laughs> to your dick's orange. And I'm a, I'm a fucking asshole. <laughs> 
<laughs> He's right. But, 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 but I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like who, like, who, like, I, like, like, like it's, it's just people think everything's easy now. Like, like it's like, oh, they think there's just easy answers to things. And like, oh, well, why don't we just do this and solve the problem? Because oh, you create six other problems with that solution. It's not that they, they want simple answers in life. There's no simple answers in life or art or anything. It's complicated. Life's complicated. It's messy. It's like a silverware drawer with no divider in it. It's almost better if you just could avoid that world and not be in it, you know, and I've tried to like, part, you know, participate in it. And even, you know, like my son will be like, oh, you know, you, you don't word it right. You don't set it right. Let me post it. Let me, I'm like, I don't fucking know. What do you think I know I this just, shit? I, yeah, like I come no, up, I don't know I, I, this you stuff. Don't, I don't, you know, me, I come from a world where we said what we felt and that was it. It was right in the your moment. Your pronouns were you and you. Yeah. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> right. <laughs> that we use and you, use? You know, <laughs> I just told him it's not that deep. If somebody it's, you don't know. No, but it's, it's funny because I. But he's right about that. It isn't it, deep because like he'll say to me, it's just Twitter. And I'm like, Cause you're I, right. I, I look at it like this. If a guy's going to tell you you suck on Twitter, when he sees you in person, you really think he's going to tell you no, you he's suck. not going to come up. He's going to well, ask you for a picture. <laughs> yeah, so but you the, know, in the old days, deep. you'd be standing around a bar, a guy come in and goes, hey, you know what I think? He'd say it, he get smacked in the mouth and goes, hey, your opinion's been heard and found one thing. Now, you know what? But it, people get all that keyboard courage. I just, I actually think that it, these, the, all these websites, Twitter, Instagram, they're all internet ghettos designed to eradicate original thought or original idea. They want you in the matrix. They want you conforming. How dare you say that or step out yeah. of line? And then, I mean, guy, like, you know, now, some bot attacks I, I, I've made Twitter these, uh, you know, these baseball videos because I'm a baseball junkie. And, you know, I started taping myself, watching Yankee games and all this shit. And people loved it and liked it. But I'm like, I really, I was doing this stuff, I, you know, now I'm like doing it for the kind of, at times I feel like a, I feel like this is stupid. Why am I even doing this? But, well, you, know, but you know, but you join the, you join the society of this. And well, then you, know, you go, okay. now I'm part of this this uh, whatever this is, yeah, but you, know? you have fans out there, man. No, but Some I people want to hear from you. They want to see. You. They, they want to see you have a reaction. They want right. to see you be a human being having a visceral reaction right. to the fucking Yankees losing it again. I mean, you, you're cold, yeah. like you know. I, I mean, but you know, you're you're a fan. It's passion. And I am. So and people love people love, they love to see that. that shit. Yeah, but they I think do. The, the 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 smart people know stuff that's legitimate than the stuff that's a lot of it's just put on. Well, I did I know? did a tweet about those crest whitening strip. I said hashtag DYI do it yourself. Hashtag life hack, those crest whitening strips also work if you're anal bleaching. You can just pop those crest whitening strips on your raisin hole <laughs> and just a little do-it-yourself project if you want. <laughs> but yeah, everybody's getting their asshole lightened. I want to know where I can go to have mine darkened up a little bit. It'll look like it's been used a little bit. You're like, it old catches me. You know what I'm saying? I mean, who, who do I go see for that? <laughs> everybody's like, like, people are bleaching their fucking asshole. Bleaching your ass? Yeah, the oh. fucking porno stars do it because they want to look, they want to look like, like you see, they want a nice oh. pink Pink. pink. They want it pink, like a devil's onion oh, ring, right there. Do you not remember that Kanye song? He said, he said, uh, yeah, I fought this model, and she just bleached her asshole, oh. and I get bleach on my t-shirt. I'ma feel like an asshole. That's what he's saying. Yeah. Oh, that's what he's saying in the song. Yeah. Yeah. So she she gets in there and bleaches, and then uh, who's thinking about your asshole? I mean, I don't know the people that. It's unbelievable. I, well, dude, I, I, why would? And look, I don't see it. What, what, are, you, what are you doing? Standing over a mirror? Right. What kind? Of, what kind of human being are you? What's Standing wrong over a mirror, you? just doing knee bends, looking at your uh, balloon knot, going, you know, that thing is a little dark. I think I can lighten it up. Hey, is that a piece of corn down there? I mean, what are you doing? Standing over a mirror? <laughs> oh like a, my god! Well, Standing over a mirror like a like a mama Luke looking at your dirt button. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I need to get that thing waxed. Looks like a piece of roadkill back there. You know what I mean? I mean? What are you? I mean, who's doing that? Like, I don't. You know what I mean? I don't know. Hey, look, it's crazy. <laughs> Everything I can see up front is my problem. Back you here, been movie buff, Jimmy. What's that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you seen the Irishman? I have. I have not seen. I'm on, I'm on the SAG nominating committee, so I definitely want to go see it. I'm. I'm waiting for, for an opportunity. How'd you I, get on the committee? I don't know. I just. I was just. I you guess were chosen. I, I get. I was chosen. I was one of the chosen ones. So now I got. I'm going through all these DVDs, watching all these movies. I, you know, go, going to see them at the theater. Uh, the Joker, which you know, it's. Uh, yeah, go see the Irishman in the theater. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah no, they, absolutely. You yeah, don't want to just. Yeah, see you guys told me the other night. I'm definitely. I want to see. The theater, and they're doing a Q and A actually today with the Nero and Pesci, and uh, where over at the uh, like the Writers Guild or something. I had an, I had an invite. Are you going? For, I can't because I got this, and I got to run. What out time is that? Uh, that's like two o'clock. Can you get me in? 
I'll, I'll give you my pass. <laughs> well, they let me in, but I'd love to go no, to No, I think you got to be on the committee. Yeah. They, choose, the they committee. choose random uh, SAG members every year. So oh, basically, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to crash like every, that. every look good. Like every SAG member. Why not? Can... You, you walk in and go, yeah, I'm here. I'm uh, doing a little research. <laughs> doing research little... for what? How the fuck I didn't get an audition for the <laughs> fucking movie. That's why I want to find out. Well, I know those guys. I yeah. mean, I worked with them. I'm, I'm, but I'm, I'm still a fan, too. You know, I've never lost that. It was a great movie. Oh, dude, man. I love that stuff. Yeah. You I know? mean, dude, nothing gets me more excited. Like, I'm a, I, I saw get... it twice. That's how much I liked it. It's great. Just yeah. the, the work, because the second time, you know, if you're going to vote on something, you got to sometimes watch something a second time, because the first time you're just watching it, the second time you can actually see. Yeah. If you know what I mean. Yeah. You can actually see better. Yeah. You, well, you, you can, see little, the you little things, see the subtleties. You can see all kinds of subtleties, nuances, you know, and you can be like, wow, that, that even got better for me, you know, the second yeah. time. Well, because I do. If you, I love a movie. I watch it two or three times, and you see all the little things, those little... Dude, that uh, you know, if you, I, I actually recorded that scene. One of my favorite scenes of all time is uh, Christopher Walken and uh, Dennis Hopper. Oh, from True Romance. True Romance. Yeah. And I, I recorded. It's a great scene. I recorded the audio. Right. And so you listen just to the audio. Just to the, the just to the audio. The dialogue. And you could hear that fucking train in the background. In the background. And the, and, and and it was there was a shift of power. In that in the in, in the thing, yeah. Because he knows he's gonna die, and he goes, "Now nah, you can't fucking hurt me because I know you're gonna kill me." So why don't I? Right. Yeah, I do a lot of reading, and then in the power shifts, it's subtle. It's great. It is like ter one of my ter terrifically acted scenes. It's a great and, scene. And my other one is uh, from Pope of Greenwich Village when he gets his thumb cut off and he comes back and he starts hitting the by You sometimes you gotta say you grab your coat and you don't say goodbye to nobody. And that whole thing, dog yeah. by dog. I mean, I, I mean, that's just, I love that movie. I, those people yeah. love uh, Pope of Grand, even though it, it is a bit of a, it is a ripoff of, uh, of Mean Streets. A, a little bit, yeah. And also my, uh, Eugene. It's, and a, it's an enjoyable movie, but I mean, if you if you watch, you know, if you watch certain movies, I mean, and you say yeah, but that like that's that neighborhood. But Mean Streets is pure. Yeah, on the raw, pure. raw. I love it. It is him. fucking raw. He's called you a fucking moo. You know. What's a fucking moo? He's got lines in that movie. Yeah. He's got a line that, and he used it once about Trump in real life. Uh, Bob did. And he goes, DD, right? Disappointed Dunsky, right? Asshole. He yeah. says to him, but I never heard this. Disappointed Dunsky. This it's fucking great. Yeah. So it's a line he must have heard, like, in the village growing up. Yeah. It's something it, authentic. Yeah. Because I heard him in real life recently go, you know what he's like? He goes, he's like a disappointed Dunsky. Oh, that's hilarious. This was De Niro that said this in yeah, real but, life. You know, the so I'm like thinking, where did he get that fucking line? Yeah. Because he something goes, you're growing up. Yeah, something he fucking, he's something like, you know, it's authentic. Like certain lines, like certain things come out of my family, like nicknames. People won't even understand what the fuck that is. Most people in the world, if, he were, if you went DD, disappointed Dunsky, yeah. right, asshole. Because that's what I think of you. That definitely is, that's a raw movie, but it but gives you that raw. sense of place. Yeah. You get a sense of place from that movie. Like that's a fucking oh, real yeah, point. Oh, yeah, because when he goes, he goes, I, he goes, I fuck you where you breathe. Because I don't give two shits about you or anybody else. Yeah. Right, right. I love that movie. <laughs> oh, I, watched, I watched The Taxi Driver. Uh, like I just nine, watched that like now. 19 times one weekend. Like, I watched 19 I times? I, yeah, it was bad. I just watched it. Taxi I, Driver is, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It's brilliant. Oh, it's yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah. The movie, I just watched it on, on this TV I bought, and it looked incredible, but just the movie is like, there's not a false moment. Yeah. In the fucking movie. Yeah. There's even people in the movie like there's a guy who's he's got his hair, he's playing the drums. He's wild. Like, they're going back to 1940. He's yeah. got his hair greased. Gene Krupa. Syncopated side. Yeah. Yeah. Then there's a guy walking on. I'll kill that motherfucker. I'll kill him. You don't even see him. You just hear him yeah. yelling. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, dude, he brings it to a porno movie. And he takes it. He, he takes it to a porno. He's got her. She's into him. Yeah. And he goes... A lot of couples come to he goes, you sure? She goes, she doesn't get mad initially. She goes, this is a dirty movie. And she looks great. She looks yeah, so yeah. sexy in the movie. Yeah. She, and, and he's like, and she likes him, not knowing that he's a little bit off. Yeah. He takes her like desperately seeking Susan. Yeah. And, he, and, and, and he's like, you know, yeah. and then, you know, she runs out of there and she's like, she goes, this was exciting to me as like saying, let's fuck. Yeah. And you feel so bad for him. He's like, well, he goes, I could take you. There are other kind of movies I could take you. Yeah, he's you know, the, and, and no. you, you, you feel for the guy because, like, you're like a guy, and you go, 
oh, I fucked up, but you really, I mean, why would you take it to a well, hardcore you, porno movie? Yeah, but you feel bad for the you guy. Feel you feel bad, but at, the, but at the end, she kind of like was, she gets in the cab, it's weird, and she's like, kind of still digging him. Yeah, it's a possibility. And, and, and he goes, he gives it a right on the arm, and he, he, he kind of like leaves her. I have a piece of pie with yeah. some cheese on it. Yeah, he goes, I mean, that's the first time he goes you know, it. you got beautiful eyes, you got beautiful eyes, he goes to her. She goes, you know, he goes, I don't like that fella. That fella you worked with, I don't like him. Yeah. I don't like him. That's the first you know? time I've ever seen anybody order a piece of uh, apple pie. pie with some yeah. cheese on it. Yeah. i never seen that before. Well, maybe that's, that's something that De Niro came up with. Yeah, but, I, I, but, I, but, I, but, but like movies like that, I, I, I watch it's movies like It's a great, like great the, movie. It's, you know, you know Kaitel is great in it. So uh, you're saying that The Irishman is in that same vein of a movie that you just uh, The said. Irishman is, 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 is it kind of reminded me a little bit of like a Once Upon a Time in America. Yeah. Kind of like that. I love that movie. You like that noodles, movie? Noodles, yeah, Yeah, noodles. and this is maybe even better because... You got some tour de force performances, yeah. but Pacino is off the wall. Yeah, I How can't good wait he to is. see. I can't He's wait like to 75. See. The guy is Dude. fucking. And Joe Pesci is great. Yeah, Bob is great too. Yeah, you know, and I mean, I can't wait to see it. And there's a little guy in the movie. This guy, Stephen Graham. He's got a couple. He's a British guy. He plays Tony Pro. Tony Provenzano. Right. Wonderful. Can't wait Wonderful. to see it. I'm you, excited. You're man. gonna you're gonna love it. Too bad you can't go to the Q and A. Yeah, I know. I'm an idiot. How's your tooth? All right. Now I gotta go get that checked. What's out wrong right with now. your tooth? I got a, a little cavity. I had to like, drill in and put some uh, temporary. Wait, in the back? No, right here. This little eye tooth here. Yeah, I just had one. Yeah. And they weren't sure what it was. I had these dentists. They're like mom and pop dentists. All right. They're great. They've been together like forty thousand years. The woman holds my hand. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh my god, they got pictures like their whole life up. Yeah, but that's Oh, it's great. like going into I'd rather a... go to a dentist like that. Yeah. And some corporate guy goes, yeah. I know. But then they go, they go, it could be a wisdom tooth or it could be this cavity. And it was, it was the cavity because they were like, the cavity fixed the pain. So I'm like, maybe I should just leave that wisdom tooth yeah, alone. Yeah, he's got he's to take this tooth out. I got a temporary, and then they're going to go make a, a thing, and then I'll get a, an implant at one point. I hate the dentist. I do. Right? Oh, yeah, it's it's like almost worse than the doctor. You know? Because yeah. you think about it. Like dentists, look, what do they do, right? Think around you. you they know what? pull teeth out of your mouth. You know what's interesting? It's pretty I, fucked up, right? Yeah, I've had, let me tell you something. I had both my knees replaced like two years ago. Oh, you had knee and, replacements? Yeah, and so when I go to the dentist now, because there's so much bacteria in my mouth, I have to take amoxicillin two days before I go in. Oh, and my I take God. And amoxicillin before while I go to, because any chance you get an infection and, and it goes into your legs, it'll go right to your knees. You'll have to take the knee joints out and put a metal rod there. So you got to be careful. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you could get, you know, seriously get a, ill, right? Yeah, you get an infection in your bones and it's not good, so. But, yeah, but I took the amoxicillin earlier, but you have to, I didn't realize that now, and I said to the surgeon, how long is that going? He goes, pretty much every time you go to the dentist, just to be on the safe side. He goes, you're probably good, but just be on a safe side because you don't want to have to deal with that. And so right. I was like, all right, great. So what do you got coming up? You, you got uh, a special that you did on your own, Yeah, right? people can go to jimmyshubert.com. They can download my special. It's called Zero Tolerance. You can rent it or buy it. Uh, you produced this on your own? Yeah, man. I Zero shot Tolerance. Shot yeah, it's great. It's shot well. It's in 4K. Com. And uh, go to jimmyshubert.com. And my tour schedule's up on my website, too. I got... Uh, uh, I'm doing a pro am. I'm going to be in Chicago next week. Funny, funny dude. If you if you get a chance to go out to the comedy club and see this guy Jimmy Schubert, for my money, he's he's one of the better guys out there. I mean, there's a lot of good comedians, but Jimmy is fucking rocks, man. He really Thank rocks. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Irish guy. Irish guy. Irish Catholic. Irish Catholic. Did you go to the Catholic North. school? Yeah, I did one to Catholic school. Me too. Yeah, I know. I was. I, I was uh, <laughs> Hey, I'm glad I got the education. You know, at least I know right from wrong now. You know what I mean? But I mean, you know, I mean, I got a moral compass. Thank God for that. You know, but I, I mean, it's. Uh, How long does it take you to write your acts, Jimmy? You know, do I'll they change up, all the time? Yeah, it changes all the time. I'll come up with something. There's a whole thing I'm doing about the the exit row and the, and the hamburger. Do you write room. them out? Just yeah, like kind of yeah, like I write them out so I know where I'm going, and then I take them on stage and play with them and try to find it and get and get the character into it. So it's really like a lot. Do like, you rehearse like, it at home? Yeah, a little bit, a little so bit. So you're like trying to write well, it you out? Know, I, yeah, I'll do it in a conversation. If it sounds right, get the wording right and get my own kind of verbiage on it. Right. You know, and uh, you know, because you use your own vernacular. You know, you have yeah. your own cadence. Your own, and I have euphemisms for body parts. You know, right. you know that I use all the time that make it funnier than just saying asshole or fucking. You know. Yeah. And so. And you're like a freight train. You get going, right? <laughs> like, you go over like 20, 25 I, I keep minutes coming hard. At you, bro, body, body, head. Yeah. But body. then you're special. How long is your special? It's an hour. So you had to pace yourself. Yeah, it's an hour and a half. But I do that uh, every week. Like I'll be in Chicago. I'll yeah. do an hour. Night, man. It'll be yeah. awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks, Thanks for, for doing this, brother. Thank you for having me on, bro. Thank you, Nick. My pleasure. All right. Jimmy Schubert. Thank you.